Hi Credo students, my name is Kate Azawa and I'm a violinist and teacher in the Boston area. I'm so excited to be sharing with you in this video. As many of you know about this, my phone storage is very high, so we will see if I can get to the end of this video before my video gets cut off. Um, just a little bit more about me, I'm from the Mansfield, Ohio area, which is um, about an hour's drive south of Oberlin, which is where Credo is based. I attended a branch location of the main Credo at a private school in the Boston area uh, at Gordon College. It was called Credo at Gordon. Credo may still have branch locations like this. I'm not sure if it does anymore, but at least it did. And I'm so glad that I attended and still hold the ideals of Credo very close to my heart. Um, okay, there's going to be a lot of talking. I wanted to mostly encourage everyone with several things. And again, if I can, I'll share um, mostly a very paraphrased lesson that I learned indirectly from Mr. Slowick. So let's get started. So vibrato is an important thing. We can miss sometimes knowing exactly how to create a sweet and pleasant vibrato sound. So just one tip for that. Make sure when you're vibrating, you actually are going below the center of pitch. If we overshoot and go a little bit higher than the center of pitch, the vibrato will be wobbly. So if this placement is exactly the center of pitch, I wanna go below only, which is something we, again, may already naturally do, but just be sure you're not accidentally overshooting. So we come back only to the center. Okay, try that out. Another thing, uh, mostly a discussion point here, no demonstration, is sound production. When you're practicing, do you feel comfortable to make as loud of a sound as you can? Do you have the safety to do that? Uh, maybe you need to add some cushioning to your wall to help ease, ease your mind from bothering others. Um, definitely want to keep your practicing during the day. Um, if you live in an apartment or a condo, you know, you don't want to be bothering people who are sleeping. So be a good neighbor and try to practice reasonable hours of the day. Um, also with sound production, are you practicing in a dry space? That's as opposed to a bathroom that would be very echoey. That would be considered a wet space. So if you practice in a bathroom, many of us may like it. The sound is very large and ringing and that creates the illusion that we're making a bigger sound than we actually can or, or are, are. And um, we need to practice for loud sound to be able to be a soloist on a stage, sending the sound out to the back of the hall. So be sure you're practicing in a space that presents a true demonstration of the kind of sound that you're practicing and practice in a space where, you're no, where you know you're not bothering anyone. A last note on the space, aside from the volume being affected, your intonation. If you're practicing in a wet space, your sound will be more ringing than usual, and that can present a problem with intonation practice. You need to listen for a ringing sound when you're uh, practicing. If you're ringing, with your pitch, and this is getting into an area I wasn't planning on discussing, so sorry for that. A true definition of being in tune is that your instrument is ringing, okay? That you are at a particular node of the instrument that kind of tickles the entire rest of the instrument. If you play a D, third finger on A string for violinist um, and violas, if you're playing a D, it will slightly tickle the open D string. You can look at this. If you're playing very in tune, the other D on your instrument should respond. And that's what is a, a, such a beautiful part of playing in tune, is that there's interaction with other nodes of the instrument. Um, I think I hope I'm getting those terms right. So if you're not in tune, you don't get as much ring, you don't get as much beauty, you don't get as much volume. There's actually even a volume boost when we're playing in tune. And 
if you're practicing in a dry space, going back to the sound production note, you can hear the ring and that's what we want to listen for. Okay, um, on to other things I had planned on discussing. Um, so we did sound production, we did vibrato, shifting. Shifting, so for shoulder held instruments, violin and viola, we have a huge obstruction in our way when we shift into upper positions. The bout. We have to turn our wrist around the bout to play here, to play here. And we also have to bend our elbow in order to shift. So then we have two movements going on when we shift into higher positions. Let's simplify that by twisting ahead of time. If we're in these lower positions, and again, this is really hard to see on the video, but let's say this is normal placement of our hand in first position. I want to prepare my upper position, position shifting. So I'm going to turn my wrist a little bit so that I'm more prepared to clear the bout. Okay, that's as opposed to not preparing it, getting stuck and having to turn. So we want to open our wrist more, turn it more before getting to the bout. And then you have less motion you have to do at the moment of your shift. That was me demonstrating a more smooth upper position um, shift. Okay, and lastly, I want to leave with a paraphrase tip from Mr. Slowick in preparing orchestra auditions. There is a huge list of things we have to check off when we're preparing our excerpts. So many things like color, timbre, articulation. Um, and at the top of this list is a list of eight very most important things. They are rhythm, 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 intonation. Intonation has to be perfect. Rhythm, rhythm, and rhythm. So orchestra panelists are looking for perfect rhythm. You need to be able to fit into the group and um, create the strength of the unity of the group in your rhythm. So always practice with your metronome with your excerpts and if it's a Mozart concerto, which I like to call metronome concerto, definitely always practice with your metronome. Um, and then give yourself chances to practice without while recording and check your uh, rhythm to see if you're, you're steady. Um, so these are my encouragements. I hope you found these inspiring and motivating. Have a great summer. All the best.